As you can probably tell by now, I was really looking forward to the seventh and final season of Star Wars The Clone Wars. I have mentioned in the past that the initial animated movie was the first Star Wars movie I ever saw in theaters, and I loved watching the subsequent animated television series back when it was still airing in Cartoon Network. I also made a couple videos leading up to this season, one video discussing a nitpick that I had with the Siege of Mandalore, as we knew it at the time, and another listing my top 10 favorite episodes from across the first six seasons. Now that season 7 is over, I think it's a good time to review this final batch of episodes. Before I begin, I would like to emphasize that this video will contain spoilers for Star Wars The Clone Wars Season 7. If you haven't finished watching this season, and you don't want to be spoiled, stop watching this video and go finish The Clone Wars. This final season consisted of 12 episodes. The first four episodes were a finalized version of the Bad Batch story arc. Previously released as animatics back in 2015, this arc saw Anakin Skywalker and Clone Captain Rex team up with the titular team of Clone Commandos to rescue the ARC Trooper Echo and retake an Axis from the Separatists. I liked how these episodes were tweaked so that they had more heart than their animatic counterparts. For example, the original animatic version of A Distant Echo had a scene in which Anakin was not too enthusiastic about the Bad Batch having pinup art of Padme painted on their ship. The finalized episode replaced this scene with one in which Anakin secretly calls Padme and discusses his concerns about their mission. I thought this was a great change, and I like how it established that both Rex and Obi-Wan were somewhat aware about Anakin's marriage. I also like how they changed the ending for Unfinished Business. The animatic ended with Rex, Echo, and the Bad Batch getting medals for helping the Republic retake an Axis. The finalized episode alludes to the medals coming to their way, but Clone Force 99 chose not to attend. Echo himself is conflicted about whether or not he should join the Bad Batch, but ultimately does join them after Rex tells him that they are some of the finest soldiers he ever fought alongside with, and he wouldn't mind if he joined them as well. I thought this was a great send-off to the last remaining member of Domino Squad. Episodes 5-8 through eight were a finalized version of the Ahsoka's Walkabout arc. Originally intended to be released as part of Season 6, this arc saw Ahsoka Tano befriend Trace and Rafa Martez and help the sisters escape the Wrath of the Pike Syndicate. I thought it was cool to see some of Ahsoka's adventures after she left the Jedi Order at the end of Season 5. I found the Martez sisters to be very entertaining and sympathetic characters. Trace was a good parallel to Ahsoka's younger, more naive self seen in the earlier seasons, while the more jaded, morally flexible Rafa was a good representation of what Ahsoka could have become after she was wronged by the Jedi. Despite their differences, they work together to resolve this conflict. I like how the sisters point out that even though she's not a Jedi anymore, Ahsoka embodies what they should be, peacekeepers who look out for everyone, not just the privileged. I also like how this arc set up the series' final one, with Ahsoka learning that the Pikes were still working with Maul, and ultimately leaving the sisters to help Bo-Katan Kryze and her Mandalorian resistance reclaim Mandalore from the former Sith Lord. Finally, episodes 9-12 through 12 depict the Siege of Mandalore, which was always intended to be the final story arc of the series. Directly overlapping with Revenge of the Sith, it saw Ahsoka and Rex lead a branch of the 501st Legion to help the Mandalore resistance retake Mandalore and capture Maul. Although I enjoyed the previous two story arcs, this one blew them out of the water. I liked seeing Ahsoka reunite with Anakin and Obi-Wan for one last time before going to Mandalore, especially when she called Obi-Wan out for caring more about saving Chancellor Palpatine than helping the Mandalorians. I found Maul's plan to be very fascinating. He wanted to lure Anakin and Obi-Wan to Mandalore so he could kill them, which would rob Darth Sidious of his apprentice. It's the closest that Maul's ever gotten to doing the right thing. The lightsaber fight between Maul and Ahsoka was amazing, I like how they got Ray Park and Lauren May Kim to do motion capture for Maul and Ahsoka, respectively, with the former reprising his role from The Phantom Menace in Solo. Ahsoka and Rex's forces leave Mandalore after capturing Maul. Ahsoka then senses Anakin helping Palpatine kill Mace Windu, with the episode reusing audio from Revenge of the Sith. Sidious orders Rex to execute Order 66, but he does attempt to resist his inhibitor chip before finally complying. After freeing Maul from custody to act as a diversion, Ahsoka was able to remove Rex's inhibitor chip with the help of a few astromech droids. Now with his free will restored, 
Rex helped Ahsoka escape the Star Destroyer while Maul was tearing it apart and the other clone troopers are trying to hunt them down. I knew we were going to see Order 66 through the perspectives of Ahsoka and Rex thanks to the Ahsoka novel, but I didn't expect it to be this heartbreaking. One of the best things that the Clone Wars did was humanize the clone troopers. Although they were all clones, they had their own distinct personalities and outlooks in the war. It's sad to see them lose their individuality during Order 66. I also like how Ahsoka and Rex not only go out of their way to not kill any of their former comrades, but also bury each and every one of them after the battle. That all being said, I do have a couple nitpicks with this season. First off, it wasn't released in chronological order. You see, there's a scene in Deal No Deal where Ahsoka, Trace, and Rafa leave Coruscant on their ship, the Silver Angel. Trace accidentally flies their ship into a military lane, and we see that the Star Destroyer right in front of them was Anakin's flagship. Anakin almost lets Admiral Yularen send a detachment to arrest them until he senses Ahsoka through the Force, and chooses to let his former Padawan go. Although this is a cool callback to a scene in Return of the Jedi where Vader senses Luke traveling to Endor but ultimately chooses to let him go, it also establishes that Ahsoka's walkabout is set sometime before Bad Batch. You see, Revenge of the Sith established that the Battle of Coruscant was the first time Anakin and Obi-Wan were back there since the Outer Rim Sieges began, and the Bad Batch arc depicts the Battle of Anaxis, which was part of the Outer Rim Sieges. My other nitpick is that I wish Season 7 included a finalized version of the Crystal Crisis and Utapau arc. Just like Ahsoka's walkabout, this four-episode story arc was intended to be released as part of Season 6, but was ultimately released as animatics back in 2014. It saw Anakin and Obi-Wan investigate the murder of a Jedi Master in Utapau, which leads to them stopping Separatist forces led by General Grievous from obtaining a giant kyber crystal, foreshadowing the creation of the Death Star. I understand that Dave Filoni's main objective with this season was to conclude Ahsoka and Rex's respective storylines at this point in the timeline, but I feel like it wouldn't have hurt if this arc was also included. Anakin and Obi-Wan's friendship was another integral part of the series, and there's also a point where the two of them discuss Ahsoka leaving the Jedi Order, establishing that Anakin never got over this decision. If I was in charge, I would have had Season 7 begin with Crystal Crisis, then Ahsoka's walkabout, then the Bad Batch, and then conclude the Siege of Mandalore. Overall, I would definitely recommend Star Wars The Clone Wars Season 7. This fan-favorite addition to the galaxy far, far away finally got the ending that it deserved. Hello, I see that you have reached the end of this video. If you liked what you just saw, you can give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on Twitter at Dialogue Nerdy. If you really want to, you can also ring the bell to be notified every time I upload a new video.